we were just discussing, and we'll go through it bit by bit, but we're saying, I wonder what Karen will think when he comes in, given the 5-1 down, coming back to 5-4, 7-5, 7-0, brilliant finish. Is your glass half full or half empty after the day you've had? No, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I, brilliant. I thought it was a brilliant match from both of us. Um, yeah, I, I just felt really loose the first sort of half of the, the first session, and um, the table was playing so fast. I thought I've just got to kind of make myself a little bit more compact, get control of the cue ball. And, um, you know, I lost the first two after the, the interval. Yeah. Um, took a 5-1 down, but I felt good. And then, you know, I reeled off three good breaks from there and felt strong going into uh, tonight's session. Talk me through those those three breaks, the 82, the 1-5 one, one and the 1-3-9. It says everything about the calibre of player you are, the world-class player you are, that you can do that in the biggest stage. You just must be buzzing. Yeah, you know, I know what it takes now. And, um, you know, this tournament is all about momentum. If, if you can get hold of the momentum and Gary had it to go 5-1 and I just kept saying to myself, you know, keep plugging away, it will turn. And when it does turn, you've got to hold on to it. And um, fair play to him because at 7-5, I, I thought he played really well to, to come back at me. Well, let's go to that because he was so ballsy, wasn't it? Because yeah. we, we, we were saying, you know, 7-5, you look at the scores yeah. it is, you'd be thinking it's game on. But he was in a world yeah. of hurt, Karen. For him to come back, it was, was really quite special. Yeah, you know, it's it's the same as what I did to him from 5-1 down. You know, I, I reeled off, I think, six frames in a row and then he reeled off two in a mm. row and I'm thinking, here we go. It's like swings and roundabouts. But um, it was just about staying in the moment. You know, I'd have took seven all from being 5-1 down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just sort of keep plugging away. It seems to me that you've got to accept that you, if you're going to go deep in this tournament, you're going to lose sessions and you were going to lose the first session at 5-1 down and you've lost a session. It's a question of how many yeah. and you dig yourself out because not, not many years, I was looking at through maybe one or two of the Hendry years, he didn't lose any sessions, but you're going to have a bad afternoon. Mm. It's a question of how you fight back from that, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the standard's so high now, mm. isn't it? You know, there's no easy draws in the first yeah. round. And, um, yeah, just sort of watching people like Higgins, you know, he's sort of, you know, been so successful here because, you know, you've seen it in his match uh, today. He can just get out of a bad session sort of, yeah. you know, really, really close. And, um, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to model my game off, off those sorts of players. Which break do you think was better? The one one nine or the knock to say it out? Because we we did love that 70-something we thought was brilliant. Yeah, you've got to say that one because, you know, the, the pressure starts to kick in. You're thinking, I want anything but a decider. And um, I was just desperate to see it out. You know, I'm sort of, I'm so good with the rest normally and I miss the green. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, just put it to bed, get on with it. And, uh, yeah, took these really well. Yeah, and your long game wasn't today as good as it can. I mean, we looked at your percentages, about 30 or percent. You knocked in some good ones at the end, but that was a, the good way to start the, that frame. You know, I know Anthony Hamilton in commentary thought this was a great shot. Yeah, this is more of like a sort of feel shot. You've just got to feel it around the angles. Yeah. It, you know, it takes a bit of pressure off knowing that you're heading towards bulk, but obviously you're trying to play it to hold for a bulk colour and yeah. um, it's sort of judging the side right. Yeah. Um, you know, that can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Yeah. Two questions for you. First one, best rest player in the world ever? Well, who would you say? You, you, where do you put yourself on the list? First. <laughs> Anthony Hamilton put you first. Jimmy White took a bit of uh, bit of offence to that. He thinks he's still a wee while to go. He's still missing a couple. No, do you know what? <laughs> yeah, obviously, I've only just seen you there, Jimmy. You're right. <laughs> got to watch what I'm saying, yeah. No, obviously, growing up, Jimmy was, you know, one of the best to watch with the rest, you know, and... Um, I think Sean Murphy as well. Yeah. I get compared a lot yeah. to Sean Murphy. And, um, yeah, you know, it's yeah. quite handy to be to be good with it. Yeah. We, we were, uh, every night, we're asking a different question to the audience to answer. And uh, it's one tonight. Talk of pressure. We said, of the players who haven't won the world title, yeah, who's most likely to win it first out of these five names? So thousands of people have been voting tonight. We don't know the result. No, we don't, look at that. No, I was a wee bit worried, Karen, because earlier on in the night... Yan Bing Tao was slightly ahead. <laughs> so there you go. You know, if you want any confidence, you look at those names. Legend of Ding Jun Wei, Mark Allen, just absolutely sensational. Barry Hawkins made semi-final after semi-final and a final. Yan Bing Tao is the hot new thing. Do you know what I mean? He's already got a Masters title. And look, the audience thinks it's, it's you. That's nice yeah, to see. Yeah, on honestly, you know, looking at those great players there, you know, I'm not 
not talking rubbish here. I, I really appreciate seeing stuff like that because um, this game, you can get sort of down on yourself a little bit and um, to sort of see that the, the sort of general public appreciate what you do and have a bit of faith in you, it's nice to see that. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. We really appreciate it. Um, it's been such a busy night. Hawkins, our Celt, awaits Karen Wilson in the last 16. But I say, such a busy night. John Higgins coming through um, against Tian Peng Fei with a century when they had to come back at 9-7 at the end of the night. Anthony McGill stepped on the gas tonight. Tremendous stuff. 10-5 winner over Ricky Walden and just what was a, a brilliant evening for him. So Higgins in a second, but Rachel, first of all, with Anthony. Congratulations, Anthony. Tell me, how much of a kick did you get out of not just winning the match, but playing to fans again? Yeah, no, it was it was brilliant. I, I mean, there weren't, weren't many, and obviously... Uh, the limited capacity, but it was it was it was amazing just to play in front. I thought it might be weird. I thought it might actually be worse if if you can't have it full. It might be worse just having a few because I didn't play last year mm. the the opening day that they had fans. But it was it was brilliant. I loved it even with so, such a small crowd. Then. Yeah, and you seem to be in, in quite positive out there as well. You seem to be seeing your shots and and playing them. Do you feel that you were in control? Well, I was I was in control of my game. I mean, I, I didn't feel in control of the match. I felt in control of myself, but he, I mean, Ricky could go out and fire everything in as well. So um, I, I knew I, f I felt good in myself. It's no guarantee they're going to win, but at least you can put in a performance that you'll be happy with. John, congratulations. Yeah. You are a soldier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know, really. I, I mean, Tian will be kicking himself, really, there. He, he had more than enough chances. When he was 7 4 in front, I, I was gone, totally gone. And. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I've won 10, 10 7. I really don't. Well, you just um, looked so, I don't know, you're out there, you, you were clearly struggling. Yeah. How lonely can it be when you when things are, are going as bad as they were? Yes, yeah, it's, it's soul-destroying, really. Now, you, you, you're playing out there in front of possibly millions of people that are watching. And the, 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 first, the first feeling was embarrassment because I was missing so many easy shots. And as I said, a couple of mates were texting me and they were saying it looked as if you'd stopped breathing a few times out there. And it's so true. I mean, it's what this theatre does to you sometimes. So at least I was breathing tonight and then I, I, I went out and uh, done a decent break at the end there. Yeah, and it looked like you were playing like a million dollars all of a sudden. Mm, I know, it's, but it's tough. I mean, it's, listen, I've been here good times, bad times, indifferent times. Mm. That was an indifferent time, but it's a great feeling to come through and win. And then obviously I'm still in the tournament and obviously onward and upward, hopefully.